Dragon Ball Super Episode 70 was probably one of the most weird Dragon Ball Super episodes that I've watched. I mean, last week was pretty weird, but I don't want to say that this week topped it, but this week was just, I don't even know what to say about it, honestly. So we knew Yamcha was pretty much going to be one of the leading characters in this episode. And I didn't understand it because, first of all, this whole episode was initiated by Champa, who decided he wanted to play baseball in Beerus's world because he wanted food from Earth. Which, the reason I think that's awkward is because, I don't know if you guys watched the Universe 6 arc or if you skipped over it, but at the end of the Universe 6 arc, as we know, Beerus won and they summoned the Super Dragon and Beerus made the wish for the Earth in Champa's timeline to be restored. So basically, that means the same food that Beerus has on his planet, Champa has. Unless Champa thinks, well, maybe his Earth is a little bit different than mine, so I want to go try his food, even though my Earth is fine. I, I don't know. I just didn't get it, really. It was a pretty awkward episode, but entertaining, to say the least. I can definitely say that it was entertaining. So Champa pretty much comes to Beerus, and he says, I want to play a game of baseball. Then you have pretty much Whis and Vados, who are pretty much the ring fixers, if you want to be honest, and they explain the rules, but Champa and Beerus are the coaches, and then you have Goku, Vegeta, Kabe, Mangeta, all those people, Kid Trunks, Goten, who are the players, and this is when this episode gets interesting when the game starts, because as we all know, Yamcha used to play baseball, so I'm guessing he kind of wants to take on that captain role, and he tells Goku, all right, we're going to do this, this is somewhere that I'm not going to lose. Despite him saying that he's not going to lose, Yamcha took more L's in this episode than Soldier Boy has taken this month. And then you got Goku who pitches the ball when the game starts and Beer says, give it everything that you've got. So Goku automatically goes Super Saiyan Blue and throws this pitch that pretty much destroys that side of the arena, it destroys the cage, it destroys the ground. Gohan barely catches it. I don't even think he does catch it right. I don't remember, but he barely catches it. And then you have Champa who's like, whoa, what, what the heck happened here? He threw it so fast. And then Whis and Vado step in and they tell him, hey, you're not supposed to do that. So they tell him, you got to calm down on the power that you're using. And then Beerus tells him, okay, throw it slow then this time. So he throws it slow and and, I mean, this ball is moving like, first of all, it should have just hit the ground, but it's just moving like everyone's sitting there watching. You see 18, um, Bulma, Chi-Chi, they fall asleep while the pitch is still just going like this to Champa. But he hits it, and it goes pretty far, and they get him out. I don't remember how they did it, but they got him out. Yamcha runs into Goku, and he says, hey, I've got this. Let me take over from here on out. Yamcha takes over pitching, and honestly, I feel like this is probably his most epic moment of the episode because he does this wolf fang spirit ball pitch where he throws it, and right before you hit it, it'll curve and then go around, and you see him when he does it. He goes like this, and it moves the ball, and I mean, that should have been against the rules right there, but anyway, they didn't count against him, so Yamcha strikes out Kabe, who gets pretty happy. He says, master, watch me. And of course he's talking to Vegeta. And then it flips around after he gets everyone out. And now Vegeta is pictured for the blue team, which the most interesting moment of this happened. Yamcha says, I'm not going to lose here. And basically Vegeta says, don't get cocky. And it's funny because you get to see Bulma who is com complimenting Yamcha in this episode. And it's funny because Vegeta doesn't get jealous at all, but you can see that they kind of like want to go back and forth for her or at least Yamcha does, but Vegeta throws the ball, and I don't know what he was thinking, because if you, if Goku's team went first, so basically, he should have known that you're not supposed to hit the person with the ball, but I think Vegeta was just being a prick, so he throws the ball, hits Yamcha right in the calf, or thigh, or something like that, I don't know, but Yamcha falls over, and he's pretty much out of it, so they get him a base. 
And this whole episode is just going back and forth. I mean, Yamcha is trying to steal bases the entire time. He gets another chance after I believe Mongetta or Botamo hits the ball. I, I really don't remember. I wasn't all that interested in the episode. But someone hits the ball, and then you get Yamcha, who runs to another base. And then Champa and Vegeta both go at him at the same time and hit him with, like, this strong, super fast attack that obviously tears him apart. And that's pretty much what this whole entire episode is about once Yamcha's team is the one who's up to bat. It's just Yamcha getting torn apart. But at some point during this episode... Champa and Beerus get mad at each other because they're not liking the way that the rules go and we finally get to see them fight for a minute and it was epic. I'm not even gonna lie. Their fight was pretty epic. They were just going back and forth arguing saying no you're wrong, no you're wrong at first and then it turned into a fist fight and I mean these two were going at it. They created a tornado that was starting to destroy everything and everything around the tornado was getting destroyed and I was like holy crap. It built up my excitement because I really wanted to see these two fight. I wanted to see where it went. I wanted to see who would win. Now, we know that Vado said that Beerus is stronger, but I don't know. The way this fight was looking, like Ciampa was throwing them hands, though. Like, man, I, I really want to see them fight. And it sucks because they said that if two gods of destruction fight, the entire universe will collapse. So, basically, these guys just have... A tremendous amount of power and it makes me wonder how close Goku and Vegeta are to Beerus because Beerus said to Goku I believe he used 90% of his power so like Goku who is much stronger now where does he come in comparison to Beerus that's just something that I'm wondering but this fight man it looked like it was about to get intense it got so serious that everyone had to hide under a shield and when the fight stopped after Vados and we stopped it, you get to see that Champa is a little upset, but they say, all right, fine, the game is over. And Champa says, so it's a draw. And they look down, and I believe it's Whis who says, no, it's not a draw. Actually, Goku's team won. And you look down, and you see Yamcha, who's laying down. He looks dead on the base. He made it to home. And he's laying in the exact same pose he was in when he got killed by the Cybermen. And it's just like they're totally, completely making fun of that moment. Like, a lot of people make fun of Yamcha because of that moment because, yeah, he came in, he thought he was awesome, and he got killed by a Cyberman. But, like, now that moment isn't even a sad moment for anyone anymore. Like, in Dragon Ball, when Piccolo died for Gohan, it was sad. When Yamcha got killed for Chaozu, it was sad. When Chaozu blew himself up to stop Nappa, it was sad. Everyone that died in the Saiyan saga, it was sad. When Goku got killed by Piccolo's special beam cannon, it was sad. But, like, Yamcha's death just has... It's been made as this meaning to comedy. You see it in so many memes. I've even seen one where it says Magic Carp uses splash on Yamcha, and you see Yamcha laying there, and there's like water around him. It's just like, oh my god, you people are not gonna stop with this. And I think Akira Toriyama knows this, and that's exactly why he incorporated that into this episode. To make matters worse, you got Krillin who looks down at Yamcha when he's laying on the base, and he says, I've seen that position somewhere referring back to that episode and i'm not even gonna lie i started laughing when that part happened it was pretty funny but anyway the episode ends with champa going back with vados and you have mongetta botamo and kabe who are practicing along the way back he's saying this is how you swing and you can see him in that little cage she uses to travel between worlds they're just in there practicing and it's funny because Vado says, I think he's completely l forgot the meaning of what we were trying to do. He's worried about the loss instead of the food that he was actually going to try and get. So it just shows that he's all about winning just as much as he is about food, or at least in a way he is. Anyway, what I really wanted to talk about is episode 71 next week's episode. The episode that looks like it's going to be extremely crazy we got hit who is coming back and he's out to put a hit on goku like oh my god we found this out about a week ago but just seeing that preview made me like holy crap because like it looks like it's gonna be serious and it looks like he's actually gonna kill goku like it's serious but the reason i'm so like 
excited for this episode is because I know a lot of people think, oh, well, they have the Dragon Balls. He's going to bring it back. It doesn't matter, man. Goku is potentially going to die. Like, Goku is going to die. That's just, that's something I can never get over because Goku's the main character. And to make matters worse, you got Goten and Gohan who are crying. And then you got Piccolo who's like, oh my gosh, what the heck happened? And I'm confused because really... I don't think that Hit would kill Goku because at the end of their fight, you can tell that Hit has this mutual respect for Goku because otherwise he wouldn't have allowed Monaka to win that fight at the tournament. He said, I see what you did. You took this L basically for your own benefit and also because you wanted to see Monaka fight. And Hit was so confused by that. But because he had respect for Goku, he lost the fight to Monaka. He pretty much flew out of the ring after getting hit by a fake punch. And I just feel like Hit has some kind of good to him, but you see he's holding like this image of Goku in his hand and he's smiling at the image. Like he, I feel like that's part of him thinking, oh, I get to fight him again. But you see Goku go Super Saiyan Blue and you see Hit in the preview come up behind him and it looks like he got a sneak attack on him. And then all of a sudden Goku's down for the count. And I think honestly, more people right now are more stoked for this episode to see what's going to happen just about than we were when the Black Arc began. That's just honestly what I think. Either way, I don't know where this arc is going to go. And I don't know if it's going to be as long as most because it's just hit right now. As of what we know, it's hit. He has a mission to kill Goku. And probably where it's going to go is somehow Goku's going to survive or maybe he will die. And they'll have to wish him back for this arc or maybe not going to happen. They'll give Vegeta an arc. Who knows? But like if Goku does die, obviously the strongest person left is Vegeta. So hopefully Vegeta gets some kind of moment in this arc because I feel like if Goku dies at this point, Vegeta and Goku have been together so much throughout the series of Dragon Ball Super because they're all, if you look at it, they're almost always together. They've been on Whis's planet for so long training together and then they're back and forth between tournaments. They have did this black art, just so much between them. They fought Frieza together. They pretty much kind of fought Beerus together, but... It was just, it's been them the entire series of Dragon Ball Super. So I really want to know what if Goku does die is going to happen to Vegeta. That's just something I feel like he's going to go crazy, maybe awaken a new power. It would be awesome just to see what's going to happen. Now, personally, I kind of feel like Vegeta is a little bit stronger than Goku unless they nerf Goku again and make him strong because that's what Akira Toriyama likes to do. He likes to keep Goku stronger than Vegeta. But if you look at it, going back to the Black Arc, we're now about to go back into canon material. The Black Arc was canon material. Where it left off, Vegeta was stronger than Goku because Goku, as we saw the second time they went to fight Black, Goku gave it everything he had except for using Kaokan, and he couldn't do anything to Black whatsoever. Vegeta, on the other hand, pretty much came in the third round, and he dominated him. And like I said, it didn't show any training when they left the second time for Goku. He just went and learned the Mafaba, and then it's basically, all right, let's go back. So it's just, it's going to be so much to look forward to in this arc. And I really just want to see where it goes. I hope they don't nerf Vegeta down. That's going to suck. They'll probably overpower Goku. I said nerf earlier, but they're probably going to overpower Goku again at some point if he does end up being pretty much the protagonist of this arc, or I'm not going to say protagonist, basically the guy who takes down the enemy. I feel like him and Hit are probably going to have at least two fights. I feel like Hit's probably going to kill him in the first fight if he does die. And Goku's going to maybe come back alive and then he's just going to go all out. And at that point, that could be the climax of this arc. I really don't know. I'm just stoked. My mind's going everywhere. I'm really excited for this arc and I hope you guys are too. Now, normally I don't even review non-canon material for Dragon Ball Super, but this episode was good enough to talk about. So I decided I would go ahead and do it. And also because I wanted to talk about what happened in this preview, which I just discussed. That's the main thing that I really wanted to talk about. And also one thing I forgot to say, we got a Goku and Vegeta moment in this episode where you just see 
how competitive they are against each other because Vegeta pitches the ball to Goku. They both go Super Saiyan Blue again, and this is where it gets pretty funny because Vegeta starts shooting energy blasts at the baseball, and obviously this would have tore it up. And then before something stops him, he's about to use Final Flash. So like, Vegeta, what are you doing, bro? You're going to destroy everything. And that was probably the funniest moment of this episode. It, it was it was an okay episode. I enjoyed it. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. But next week's episode, I'm definitely going to be reviewing it. I can already tell you guys now I'm going to be reviewing next week's episode. But anyway, that said, I got nothing more to say about it. Dragon Ball Super, episode 70. Great episode 71 preview. Looks like it's going to be awesome next week. So I will be reviewing it. But anyway, I hope you guys like the video. If you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That always helps me out. Subscribe to my channel for more reviews if you haven't already. And follow me on everything you see in the description below. If you want to talk to me about anime, hit me up on Anime Amino at Animated Heroes. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace.